Hey folks, Ken here. Um, talking about the profiler, Kemper profiler. Uh, I'll switch the video around here in a second, but uh, just wanted to uh, do a video. I hadn't seen anybody put a video together uh, talking about the uh, the profiler and using it with uh, an acoustic guitar and electric guitar too. But uh, you can look back on my channel and you can see a couple videos from acoustic rigs that I've put together over the years. And um, but recently I've been wanting to get out and play my electric and uh, even in some solo kind of scenarios do some looping and things like that uh but it's just been kind of a pain to drag all that stuff out you need another guitar uh, an amp I got two pedal boards now for electric guitar and and for acoustic guitar and uh it's just a lot of stuff uh, to haul around and to carry and all that stuff so trying to make that as simple as possible and so i thought i would try out the the kemper profiler uh found a great deal on ebay for the rack mount and the and the foot switch and of course the idea was how do you use it for for both? And so, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I, the the sound for the electric wasn't really all that concerning to me. I, I knew I'd probably be able to get something that I was uh, that I was happy with. But uh, the acoustic uh, part of it was the unknown. And um, and I'm happy to say, after uh, messing around with it for a little bit, that uh, I've got a, a a nice acoustic sound that uh, I'm pretty happy with and a lots of different So, you know, I was using, uh, as you can tell, if you look at my other videos, I was using some Strymon pedals and different things for, uh, for reverbs and delays and stuff like that. And uh, the, uh, the effects rack in this thing is, is, is pretty impressive. Um, and I'll spin the camera here around a second and kind of show you what I have set up at this point. But um, anyway, uh, pretty, pretty happy with it. I'll give you a kind of the layout of, of what I've got set up here for the acoustic and the electric. I've only had this thing for a couple of days. I've been messing with it for a couple of days. Um, I've really enjoyed it. The only uh, kind of unfortunate thing is that every once in a while in the, in the browse mode when I'm uh, setting stuff up that uh, it'll lock up every once in a while. And it doesn't show any errors or anything like that. It just basically stops output. The, I can no longer hear the guitar. And the only thing I can do is turn it off and turn it back on again. So uh, when I'm editing things, I tend to, to save frequently uh, just in case something like that happens. It's actually happened like three, four, four or five times. Um, and I have the latest firmware and, and all that stuff installed. So uh, anyway, let me switch it around. I'll kind of show you the panel and what I have set up. All right, so over here checking out the, uh, the profiler now. Um, so basically for me, when I took it out of the box, uh, the first thing I did was I went and downloaded the firmware and uh, I grabbed the Michael Britt uh, off the rig exchange, the free one, and then I actually went out and, and bought uh, one of the packs, the Dumble Pack, um, off of his uh, off his website, and then uploaded those. Uh, I found, I don't know what the trick is, I had to use, I think I was on my third or fourth uh, USB key uh, before one worked, and basically you just plug it in and it'll detect it and start to format it so it's kind of how you know if it works if you plug it in it doesn't do anything then it's not recognizing the stick but then once it does that it's you can open it up in windows and uh or mac and then you can just copy the profiles and things to it and plug them in and then you do an import uh and away you go it's pretty pretty straightforward once you plug the thing in the usb stick in it kind of guides you through what you need to do so i updated the firmware i got everything uh the way that i needed to get it um, one of the things that i downloaded was one of these profiles and so it happened to be called uh, this acoustic 360 uh, pre 4 and then I also downloaded one that was like a Fishman uh, profile as well one of the things um, that you can see here is that in the stack section this uh, amplifier um, uh, is turned on and 
I don't like the way that sounds. Um, I like the way that it sounded for kind of a lead, acoustic lead tone, because one of the things, and I don't know if you can notice it, if you notice it or not, but if you have this on, you can see here the gain works, right? So you, this is an acoustic guitar, but the gain works here. And so you can kind of get it to break up a little bit, almost like you have a distortion pedal or an overdrive pedal or something like that. If you turn that the amplifier off, then this doesn't work anymore, but it really cleans it up. This just kind of naturally imparts this sort of low end uh, thing that uh, even with the gain all the way down that you might like. Uh, I didn't like it. It didn't, uh, it doesn't sound very acoustic guitar-ish. So uh, you can mess around with these and see, obviously you don't need the cabinet simulator turned on, which you could see was off uh, for the for this particular preset. And then of course you want the EQ on because you want to be able to make adjustments here. Now you also have in the, in the stomp sections, you can uh, use an EQ pedal and there's uh, different kinds of uh, pedals that have different frequency ranges and things like that. So if you need uh, more EQ just specific to this preset, so like you don't want to mess with it on the channel because you're playing acoustic and electric and so you don't want to carve up the the uh, EQ on the on the channels on the mixer to sound great with the acoustic and then it uh, doesn't sound so great with the electric guitar. So uh, you can kind of try to keep it as flat as you can on the on the console on the mixer um, and then use uh, EQ pedals and things like that to be able to to pull that stuff in. So what I did here was I started editing and things like that and then when you do store It'll ask if you want to do store as, if you want to rename, I uh, just wanted to leave the preset the way that it was, or if you wanted to replace what you're working on. So I did a store as, and then saved it uh, to this one that I call um, Acoustic and Ken. And so once you do that, then you can start pulling in the stomp pedals, and then you can pull in the effects pedals. Um, so this is always reverb. This is always a delay. These two uh, right here, um, I know it's hard to see, but you can look at your unit and make sense. But there's one that's an X, there's one that's a mod. Uh, those two you are true stereo, um, whereas the uh, the stomp pedals over here are not going to be uh, true stereo. So if you use um, you know delays or any other kinds of effects, delays and reverbs and things like that, that allow you to get this nice stereo image um, then you can use those here and if you're running in stereo which I am I've got my main outputs into the console and um, one's panned hard left one's panned hard right and so any uh, you know stereo stuff is going to be reflected that way um, and then at this point you're just adding uh, effects in uh, so in this case this is you can see here um, since it's a compressor this one right here is actually like an octave pedal. So you can see as they light everything up, these two are not active. Um, this one's active, this is a delay. Uh, this is not active, another delay in the reverb. So like for the reverb, if you wanna change the reverb, you press and hold it. And then here are your, the reverb options. So you got you know ambience and hall and dark hall and those kinds of things. And so we just leave it as that. And of course you have the different settings um, that you want to mess with here. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see any way to do any uh, EQ, like reverb EQ kind of stuff, if you ever wanted to to do any of that. Um, and see any way to do that. And of course, if you don't have the, the foot pedal, then when you click any of those, um, it makes them active or inactive. And I'll show you the foot pedal uh, here in a second. So really, um, you know that's kind of the the uh, the settings there for that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and once you get that set up and you save your profile, when you come over here to performance mode, which is where when you're at a gig, uh, this is what you'll use. And hopefully, if you buy one of these, you're going to buy uh, the foot pedal as well. And what you can do here is. Um, uh, each of these, and you'll see this here in a second, but each of these is one of the the switches on the pedal. So the, the pedal actually has five across, so one, two, three, four, five. And then as you click the different pedals, or the different switches on the pedal, then it moves that back. And so you can edit this, you can arrange them, you can move them around. 
uh, this little the rig button over here, which I don't think you can see with my finger, but uh, you can you know hit any of these. Uh, this slot has to be active. Any of these, you can turn them off. So let's just say uh, you didn't have these two slots. You could take this off and it would disable it. You see it's black now. So if you only wanted to do two or three things um, in, a, in, a, you know, in, a, in a setting or in a, I don't know what they call it, a rig, I guess, um, then you, know, you could just have two or three, whatever you wanted to have there. So you can go to this one and then you would hit the browse button. And then you would just go find whatever the preset was that you wanted, that you built, and then you would load that in. And then here you can come back up here, and basically um, the way that the pedal assigning uh, the effects to the different pedals, is you just push this and you push the you know pedal or the switch. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second when I get to this. But you just push them at the same time. And then now you basically, it's just like uh, on your pedal board, you can bring this, this octa octave pedal can bring it in and out so you can see it'll light up there hitting the foot switch so I don't I want it off obviously most of the time but when I want it on I can hit the pedal or hit the switch uh, on the pedal and it will come it will come active same thing with uh, the delays and stuff so you can see that kind of pop up over here um, and you know any of the other settings right here uh, as well so uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward from that point. I just have uh, this one uh, rig set up. So I just have five settings basically, uh, three for electric and then two for acoustic. And the only difference between the these two is this is that clean that I played at the beginning. This is, um, you can see here, if you look over here, I've got the amp turned back on and then I have this kind of cranked up a little bit. So again, it's kind of introduces that distortion or overdrive kind of a thing and uh, it sounds pretty good for like a lead tone so if you're doing a loop or something you can get get that working and then um, and then do kind of a lead tone over it and I'll actually do that for you here in a second when I finish um, I'll get that going here so um, all right so I'm on this side now looking at the uh, at the pedal or the remote I guess is what it's called so pretty straightforward. There's a, there's actually some good videos on the remote on the remote, um, but uh, again, these are your you know the banks that you have. So you got multiple banks. You can go up and down. I'm just using one right now. I've named it acoustic because um, what I was going to do is just set up all acoustic patches here and then move up a bank and then do all electric, which I which I will at some point. Um, even maybe go a little bit further than that. Uh, but the way that uh, it worked out for me, I just needed uh, kind of one acoustic sound, different effects here. So these are where you assign your effects. And I was talking about this a second ago. When you wanted to assign that, you just push this down and then push whatever the button is, the stomp pedal or the effect pedal that you want at the same time. And then the light will light up. And you can do two, of course. This one means this is active. If I push it, it means it's not active. Um, you can actually do three, but you won't get the other light for that. So let's just say you had two different delays. Um, you could assign those to the same pedal, and then this is active, and when you press it again, the other one would be active. From what I can tell, I don't know of a way to shut it off. Um, so I tried assigning two, but what I got was uh, one or the other, right, was turned on. So it wasn't like there was a, a third, you know, button press where both of them were off. Um, you had to basically use one or the other. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. You can see some other uh, notation here. These are different uh, for the looper pedal. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. In fact, I may get the acoustic back out and just do like a loop thing for you. Um, but basically that's it. So here's the button up here that switches you, switches the from looping. Here's the tuner button. Um, one of the things that was interesting about the tuner is that... Uh, you can, you have to, by default, this, when you put the tuner on, there's a button up here to mute the signal. So by default, when I took it out of the box, when I hit the tuner button, it did not actually mute the output, which of course you kind of want it to do. I would think that would have been the default, uh, but it wasn't. And so you hit that and then it'll mute the output and then you can switch it back and forth. So if you wanted one of the, uh, you know, the tuner that looked like that, I can't remember what the name of that tuner is called. Or you can do this bubble tuner thing, which is a little bit easier on my eyes. Um, and so then once you have that, of course, you see the same thing down here. 
So then once you have that set up, I mean, you're pretty much good to go. And so now is it's as easy as uh, you know switching from from uh, one preset to the other. One thing that's really cool that I haven't uh, that I haven't messed with is you can see uh, they have this thing it's called a morphing mode. And so what this allows you to do is let's just say for example on this on this channel here you can see if I click it once it's there and if I click it again it dims that and it's uh, up here right. So what I could have done is an example uh, over here. Let's just say for my acoustic side, let's just say I liked it with uh, with the amp knob on, right? Um, and let's just say I, you know I like that setting. I wanted to be able to do that. Uh, well, I could actually click up here, and then I could turn the gain up, right? So if I well, I wouldn't be able to do that here because I didn't do it, but I don't want to change the, the setting for that. But what would happen is that now uh, pushing this again basically uh, is like a boost, right? Or you can, from what I've read, you can change any of the parameters. So you can change delay parameters or any of the other different kind of effects parameters. And so basically you get like two settings in one switch. It's called morphing. So if you wanted to read more about how you do that, it's in the manual. Um, if you wanted to read uh, a little bit more about how that works. So basically you have kind of 10 settings in five switches, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and again, you know, the effects and everything are pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Um, uh, just real quick on my rig here. So this is what I've got set up. I've got it in my little rack. I use, uh, for my acoustic rig, I use an Allen and Heath, uh, mixer and, um, and then I'm running into two channels here. So I'm running into channels 13 and 14. Again, true stereo. Channel 13 is panned all the way to the left. 14 is panned all the way to the right. I've um, got a couple uh, different coax wedges here that I use. And then uh, I've got my EAW Redline speakers up there that I use. I've just got them pointed back at me right now while I'm doing some testing. And basically just trying to get levels and stuff. i got my microphone hooked up. And just trying to play like I'm playing at a gig just to make sure that uh, the best I can before I go out there and play that all the levels and stuff are right. And then, of course, getting the level set right for the acoustic and the electric. I mean, you want uh, you're not going to be up here at the console, especially for me at an acoustic gig. I don't have a sound guy. So, um, you know, I want to try to minimize the amount of work that I'm doing here and uh, get it all where levels and things like that are the way that they're supposed to be down here. So, uh, so far, I think I've got a, done a pretty good job uh, of doing that, but it is a little bit of, a little bit of trial and error, but let me, uh, let me hook my, uh, acoustic back up and then, uh, I'll try to do like a little loop or something like that. So hopefully you can get a good idea of what it sounds like. I'm recording this on my phone. This is a, <laughs> my galaxy, uh, S eight phone, which has a pretty good camera. Uh, I don't know about the audio, so we'll kind of see what that looks like, but you'll get a little bit of an idea and I'll put the camera on the looper so that you can actually see the pedals and stuff like that and what I'm doing. All right, here, let me get my, get this set up the best that I can here for the looper. I'm grab my guitar. It's a real quick demo. So I'm on the, uh, I'm on the tuner here. So now if I come out of the tuner, if you can see that, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but now I'm on my, um, So, you know, playing along, playing along, I want to get a loop going, uh, hit the loop, see here, so now I'm empty, so now I can just kind of start playing my... switch back over here and switch to my lead tone. Alright, or I can throw on that like octave pedal as an example. Alright, or I can do like a reverb or something, I don't know what's in here. Guitar like hanging down on my knees. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, <clears throat> and so, of course, now when you want to uh, stop, okay, so one other thing that's kind of interesting here, too, if you wanted to do an overdub, if that changes into overdub mode. the same lick over the top of it but the cool thing is if you wanted to just kill that last um, overdub that you're doing you can use this button and it just takes away the last uh, the last one of the the uh, recordings that you did and then of course this is a cool button here too all right so if you're kind of playing along in a band situation and you brought it in too early or something like that, you could push that button and kind of start back on the one. Um, so now it shows stopped, which means that the this is still active. Press that three times. Now that light goes off and it's empty. Hit this button again to disengage the looper and you're back to your performance mode. And that's pretty much all there is uh, to the pedal itself and to looping and everything. Um, you know, again, I think what's so cool about this is that, uh, you know, I don't have to drag around any power or have power in front of me. Um, just have a really nice self-contained rig. This cable is playing long. It doesn't need a, again, doesn't need a, a power adapter or anything to plug it in. You just plug in the, the cable back here. It's like a Neutrik network looking cable. And uh, so you don't have to have a power strip in front of you to plug, you know, uh, pedal boards and stuff into. And... Um, just a really nice, small, self-contained rig that you can use for both acoustic and, uh, and electric and have all the effects and everything that you could possibly need, uh, even for uh, an acoustic environment, for sure. Um, just super happy with it. i uh, got a gig coming up, and uh, if anything changes or have any updates or uh, decide that I hate it, whatever, I may put another video up. But uh, after having a few hours to mess around and get some profiles set up, uh, and play through uh, my rig. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, anyway, hadn't seen uh, again, hadn't seen in a, anybody put a video up talking specifically about running acoustic through this thing. So I thought uh, I'll just go ahead and put that up there for anybody that uh, was interested in that. So uh, have fun. Good luck.